Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is Eric Johnson. I want to talk about my story with Asperger's and tell you how I discovered I had Asperger's really late in life. Actually, probably I was 47 when I found out and I'm going to tell you how I found out in a minute. But first I want to start back at the very beginning of my childhood and just give you a couple, you know, indicators of my Asperger's and we'll go from there. Um, so basically when I was eight years old, I started rocking on the floor back and forth while my parents and I watched TV. Um, I don't remember exactly why I did it. I knew that my dad had a temper that was kind of scary and maybe I didn't feel safe. And so I think I just, I just felt a tendency to rock back and forth and I discovered that it was soothing. Uh, during that time, I also started to, <coughs> excuse me, I started to um, create create shows and stuff when I went to bed uh, because my bedtime was very early. So I remember just singing and 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 touching myself, exploring myself, trying to find <clears throat> trying to find pleasure um, because I wanted to feel good. And so I've, I've had that since I was eight years old. I don't know what happened, but, um, I started rocking back and forth and in grade school, I kept getting in trouble with the teachers. Um, I remember just really, really bad teachers. I mean, they were violent. I remember getting hit by a teacher. One teacher grabbed me by the hair and pulled me up like literally lifted my body off the ground by pulling my hair because I wouldn't let a certain kid sit next to me. I was very bullheaded and my dad was bullheaded. And, and eventually we didn't get along when I became a teenager, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I just remember uh, feeling very alone and feeling like my best friend was myself, playing games by myself, um, I had a huge imagination and I could do repetitive things that other kids couldn't, you know, they couldn't do, they, they would get bored or whatever. I could, I could ride my bicycle in the driveway in circles, literally. I mean, we had a short driveway and I could, I could do that for two hours, just riding in circles. Um, luckily we had a great view of the, of the water. Uh, the Puget Sound in Washington State. So I would, you know, one direction on my bicycle, I would look out and see the water. And I loved tugboats and freighters. And I loved seeing the smoke rise from their smokestacks. I, I was always enamored with uh, smoke. I, I loved smoke. In fact, I played with fire. My parents were very strict and they didn't let me touch matches. So when friends came over and they had matches or something, it was a big deal to start a little campfire, you know, in a hidden section of our, of our yard. Uh, but I was, I was just, I loved fire for some reason. I loved the smoke. I loved the process of lighting the fire, the lining up of twigs. Sorry, I'm trying, my phone's shaking because I'm trying to stabilize it with my legs, but... Uh, I just loved the orchestration, basically, of starting a fire, and it was it was risque, so there was a lot of excitement around it. I also started to spy on my neighbors. I was obsessed with knowing what they were doing and watching them perform their daily routines inside their house without knowing I was watching. So basically, like, what's that called? Voyeurism? So I was basically a pyro and a voyeur, <laughs> not too good of a start. I mean, they, they basically say those traits are um, associated with uh, sociopaths and mass murderers. <laughs> I didn't kill anyone, don't worry. Um, so basically, I spied on my friend, my neighbors, and uh, started little fires, played with myself, and I rocked a couple hours a day. When I was 12 years old, I was, I was really stemming a lot. I was, I was rocking, but I was also tapping a lot. And I got to the point where I would have to go get kitchen utensils 
and start drumming with those wooden spoons on cow charms. And I would play along to my sister's music. I loved music. I loved my dad's. My dad listened to blues. I would love that. He also listened to Linda Ronstant and the Bee Gees. This is in the 70s. So I'd listen to that. And then friends turned me on to the Rolling Stones. But my dad didn't like that because they were too wild. So he confiscated my Rolling Stones and then confiscated my Kiss album that a friend gave me and a Queen album, I believe. So I was trying to discover my own music and my dad was preventing me to do that because it was wild rock and roll. Um, so I listened to my sister's uh, Go-Go's. I remember playing on the couch with uh, the wooden spoons to the song We Got the Beat by the Go-Go's. Eventually, it was I was tapping so much, my mom decided to just get me a drum set. I really wanted to, to drum. It was like a stimming, it was stimming heaven to get a drum set. And then I, so basically, from that point on, I, I rocked and I listened to music after dinner every night. I discovered heavy, heavy rock, hard rock, heavy metal. Uh, when I was 12, it, it blew me away. I just, I thought it was magic. I just, I, you know, Iron Maiden made me realize that you could be a warrior. Uh, they created different, um, you know, war scenes and warrior theme songs, basically, uh, with really wild guitar solos and stuff. And I, it just blew my mind and it made my imagination explore things even more. So <clears throat> when I was 17, I discovered alcohol and that was probably the next best thing in my whole life because I felt 17 years of stress and anxiety lift off my shoulders with the first drink of alcohol. And so now I had alcohol, I had music and I had rocking and those things stayed with me for many, many years. In fact, I just quit rocking after 40 years. Um, this January uh, so that's why I started this channel and started my blog addictionfreed.com because um, this is a journey I want to share with everyone is my I'm not stimming anymore I, I got up to stimming 14 hours a day and uh, you know I was self-isolating really bad so alcohol was very magical very magical. I could stay up all night on it. It gave me a certain, it gave me so much energy because I was unhindered. I, um, all the anxiety and stress lifted off of me when I, when I drank. The buzz was magical. I could stay up all night and I was manic. I was so excited about life. I would run around and talk to people that I normally wouldn't talk to. It just gave me liquid courage and it made me open up because under my dad's rule, I couldn't be myself. And at school, I had people that, you know, I was bullied. Even my friends in school teased me. And then when I got home, my dad would berate me and force me to do homework, force me to eat all my dinner. And he was starting to physically... Uh, attack me a little. I mean, not a lot, you know, probably only two times out of 18 years, but still his rage was so scary. I, and I knew I, I could see it coming. I could hear it coming because he would literally be breathing so hard through his nostrils that he sounded like a raging bull. And I knew that my, my time was limited. <laughs> I knew that my, my days were up when he was that angry. So self-esteem wise, I was beaten down and I could care less about education in the system. All I wanted to do was be a rock and roll drummer. And so eventually I dropped out of high school. There was nothing my parents could do about it. And, um, but before that, I want to tell you two more things that are kind of Asperger's related. I loved, I loved the 4th of July because I could collect fireworks. And I would rather just line them up on my on my floor and take pictures of them like a little colorful army than light them off. 
I still have pictures posing in front of my fireworks, uh, which is kind of an Asperger's trait because they like organizing, they like colorful things, and I just love the labeling on fireworks. The other thing I collected were stamps. I loved stamps. I loved the little colors. I used to collect stamps from around the world, and some stamps were just so cool. Uh, really bright colors. And then the other thing is I really liked uh, diesel smoke. So whenever, like, uh, you know, even regular exhaust, I used to smell the exhaust from cars. And um, I just loved the smell of diesel because our, our sailboat had a diesel motor. And I used to just smell that diesel smoke. And I loved the sound of the, the diesel motor. And it would knock me out. Uh, I would I would sleep listening to the diesel motor as a child as my dad would sail the boat around the harbor um, so I really liked noises certain noises other noises were very annoying like people chewing around me sudden loud uh, noises like glass you know glass cups hitting the table or plates or forks hitting plates I just couldn't stand that um, so when I was 17, I dropped out of high school. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I just had a very low self-esteem and I didn't like hanging out in groups. I, I had a couple best friends and I would only hang out with them one-on-one. -on -one. When other people came around, I would have to leave. I couldn't handle groups. And then uh, the alcohol got worse and then I just would hang out with my girlfriends and I would ignore my friends and it was basically just alcohol and a girlfriend and I had music I was listening to music and there and when, when I didn't have a job I would stim all day I would rock when I didn't work and then when I did get a job it would be like a it would be a cooking job or a dishwashing job I started dishes when I was 16 worked my way up to line cook when I was 18 um, and I had fun with that. I liked the repetition. You know, I liked flipping burgers. I liked sauteing, you know. I, I never made it to chef because the alcohol eventually took over um, and nearly killed me. I had a heart attack when I was 32 because of alcohol-related things. I tore up many friendships and relationships. I quit over 80 jobs. I got fired from jobs. Alcohol was just taking over. Um, when I started to work from home six years ago, I was stemming 14 hours a day. Luckily, I quit alcohol when I was 36, but when I quit alcohol, I still isolated. I didn't really want friends anymore. All I had was music and stemming. And music has been there ever since I was eight years old. It's been like my best lover ever. Um, and music took me to worlds I, I could never imagine and actually physically affected me. And I, I remember the first time I discovered Tears of Joy by listening to songs. That just took me over the top. That's the other thing is I had emotional outbursts that I couldn't control. So if someone made me upset, if I felt like I was... Uh, S some unfair action was taken against me. I would have a tantrum. I would hit things. I would stomp my feet and I, I couldn't let it go. I would hold on to grudges for years. And I always remembered the bullies and what they said to me and I wanted to get them back. I wanted to get my dad back since ever since I was five years old and he spanked me really hard for picking up fiberglass in a boatyard. Um, I wanted to get everyone back, but the only thing that really happened was I, I isolated to the point where I, my sanity was deteriorating and I didn't get anyone back. So <clears throat> last a year and a half ago, I didn't know anything about Asperger's. I knew a little bit about autism from the movie Rain Man. That's it. And a year and a half ago, uh, my fiance, who I'm still with today, she said that, um, I was talking about trains one day 
and she had read an article about uh, signs of Asperger's. And she said, yeah, you know, guys with Asperger's, they like trains. That's one of their, that's one thing that they really like. And I remember growing up just loving trains. In fact, when I was 20 years, years old, I hopped trains with a friend, a couple friends. We made it from Seattle, Washington down to Roseville, California. And that was the best time of my, of my life, even though I got really homesick and freaked out and had to leave them and go back home. But on the ride home, I actually took a freight train all by myself, all the way back to uh, Eugene, Oregon, and slept in the engine. The third engine, there's no engineers in there, and I literally had the engine unit all to myself. It had, it had heat, it had water, and uh, it was a tremendous time. But for someone with Asperger's, all those different changes you know, riding, hopping trains was very dangerous. I was stressed out. My friends were drinking. That was one of the times when I stopped drinking. And uh, so anyways, my fiance was like, you know, they, you know, they love trains and they love little lights and they love certain sounds. And I really think you might have Asperger's. So I started researching it and felt tremendous relief. I really felt like I felt like I discovered freedom. I felt like I discovered, I truly discovered myself after 47 years, 39 years of stemming at that point. I was like, oh my gosh, all of this makes sense. I have Asperger's. And then I did an autistic test and I scored on the lower end of the autis autistic spectrum. And I almost cried because I finally had a title to all of my characteristics, my personality, all the failed relationships, all the isolation. When I was drinking, towards the last couple years of drinking, when I was 34 to 36, I was isolating in a dark room, getting drunk twice a day, not eating anymore because I didn't want it to ruin my buzz, and I was going out fast. And friends, the only friend I had was like, dude, you're going to die in a year. And that didn't stop me. The only thing that stopped me from drinking was I was shamed by the skateboarder guy that came into my room. He was my girlfriend's friend. And he just, I was naked in bed, shaking from alcohol withdrawals. And he picked up my girlfriend's guitar, started making funny songs about me. And I was so angry and I couldn't get up and kick him out of the house. I, I was truly defenseless. I was shaking, naked, and angry. Angry. And I was destroying myself. And at that point, I knew it was over. I knew the alcohol was done. I knew that, ex I knew that girlfriend was over. And I left that whole environment. And I, I just picked up my life. And then I, the current fiance turned me on to spirituality and so we started meditating we actually went to Peru and did ayahuasca and I started to unravel all the addictions because I realized that they were coping mechanisms and I didn't want to run for myself anymore I wanted to truly discover who I am and um, I'm approaching 30 days now without stemming and I am not running to music. I am not running to any addiction right now. Uh, not even sugar. Not sugar, not music, not fapping, not fidgeting, not tapping, not pacing, not whistling, not picking scabs off my legs. I'm literally sitting still because I want the true Eric to come out. So this channel is about my journey, and I just want to tell you that I am so happy that I self-diagnosed, and uh, you know I have a lot of traits that other Asperger's people have. I love music; it's like heaven on earth. If you're if you were to ask me what was the best thing about this life, I'd have to say music. Uh, besides finding God, you know, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. I discovered came into my life uh, a couple years ago 
And that was the biggest high I ever felt because it was pure love. Uh, they call it agape, agape love. It was pure agape love. It came into my heart and it broke down. It broke me down. I cried for four hours the first time the Holy Spirit hit me. And it was while listening to a Christian heavy metal song. And I, I felt like it was my true father hugging me with unconditional love that I have never experienced from another person in my life. And I knew from then on that I wanted to be a Christian and to unravel all of these addictions and to really become the true man I was meant to be. So thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment if you have any Asperger's or autism. Uh, do you want to quit? Are you stemming? Tell me what's going on. Share this video. We got to get it out because this is a, this is a mission of mine. This is the, the real reason I'm alive. God showed me that 40 years of stemming is my story because it's, it's enough time to almost destroy myself, but uh, just enough time to save myself and help others because I was a self-centered, narcissistic, alcoholic, addict who just wanted to please himself because I was in fight or flight since I was a little boy. You know, I was in fight or flight because of my dad, because of the bullies in school, because of the teachers, because of even my friends and even my girlfriends, ex-girlfriends. We'd get into these huge fights and I would hold grudges for months and everything was just beating me down and making me bitter and jaded. So I am very glad that I am on the upward swing. I know what I am now, and I'm excited to see where this goes. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you soon.